In this video, I'll go over what is stratification in statistics. Before I do, I do want to ask, please like and subscribe this video. A lot of people are watching my videos, but not subscribing. It would help greatly if you guys were to subscribe. Thanks. The first thing to understand is that stratification is a sampling technique. It's not something like blocking, which is part of the design of experiments. The next is to understand the use and purpose of stratification. So what you use in stratification are what's called strata, or in singular, it's called stratum. And what those are are groupings based off characteristics. And those characteristics could be anything depending on what your field is. In social science, this would be like income level, other demographics. In biological sciences, it's going to be looking at weight, height, sex. So that's the important understanding of strata, is that the grouping is based off characteristics. And those characteristics also need to be identified in such a way that one person is in one of those groups. You're not going to have one person in two groups or three groups. It should be set in such a way where one person would be identified in one group. If not, you're going to have problems with your analysis at the end. The next purpose of this is to use instead of simple random sampling on the whole sample. Now, what happens when you do a simple random sample is that generally speaking, understanding central limit theorem and other understandings within statistics and probability, it's going to be proportional to whatever you're studying. The problem comes when you start understanding that there's confounding variables or that there's some sort of bias in methodology that you can't get around. Maybe you're doing a cell phone survey but realize that most old people do not actually have cell phones or an internet survey but you realize not everybody who's out in the population has a computer. So you have to account for certain conditions. Random sampling is happening in stratification. The difference is it's not simple. Basically, you're making sure you have a quota of each characteristic that you're looking for. So if you're basing it off of income level and you notice people that are above 100,000 make up about 5% of the population, and below that make up the other 95%, you're going to want to make sure that you have that proportion correctly and that you're not oversampling that 5% to give you a biased survey. And the way you would get that is by using what's called a proportional sampling where you understand that there's a distribution of income levels and you use that distribution, whether it's from a census or another survey, maybe a larger survey, and you're applying that same proportion to your sample so that you make sure that you have an appropriate sample to reflect what's going on in the population. You're doing a thousand people and you want to make sure you have that 5%. What that means is that you are guaranteeing 50 people to be sampled. The important thing here is that you're trying to get a reflective sample of what's going on in the population within your sample. Now there are different applications of a proportional sample. Sometimes you'll simply have just a proportional sample. In other cases, you'll have what's known as like oversampling or overrepresentation sampling, where you look at a minority population and you blow it up in the sample to observe what's going on because maybe something what you're studying is very rare. And ways of dealing with that oversampling come from weighting. So you make sure that you weight appropriately at the very end. So if you're sampling, say, 1,250 for the sake of oversampling, you're then bring through weighting that back down to 1,000 so that you have the, the proper proportions even though you oversampled a mi minority population. And that goes into a much more higher level thing. It's just a matter of this exists, this is an example of how it's applied because it's fairly common. And I'm sure some of you have heard about it in, on some level. The last thing I'd like to go over is, well, what's the purpose of this? And the purpose of stratification is to isolate variability based on strata and sampling. So what you're doing is you're designating groups of people or objects into these strata to see what their natural variances are. But on top of that, you're applying a number to how many observations you're, you're seeing that happen. And you know, as we understand from the variance, 
calculation, we know that the amount of people you witness or the amount of observations you see is going to affect that calculation. And so that's why that's said. The next is looking at an example. And so you have a sample of a thousand individuals based on income level. And so the first thing you need to do is look at that distribution. And that distribution comes from maybe a census or like I said, a larger sample. And what you have here is everybody above $100,000 is 5%. People between 50 and 100,000 make up 65% of the population and below 50,000 make up 30% of the population. And so if you're doing a proportional sample, this is how it looks. You have for above 100,000, 50, 50,000 to 100,000, you have 650. For below 50,000, you have 300. Now, when you're trying to overrepresent, I gave an example of adding 250 to the 50. And so we have 300, 650, 300. And like I said, what you would apply there after that is a weight so that you take that 300 and you bring it down to 50, but that's a little bit more advanced. And like I said, I'm just going to leave it at that because it is a common way of doing this. So I hope this was helpful. And if you liked it, please like and subscribe. Thank you and stay nerdy, my friends.